Hello guys, this is Modest Major here, bringing you some commentary over some Halo 4 Master Chief Collection gameplay. Uh, I've mentioned in the last video that I've been posting a lot of Halo 3 gameplay, so here's some Halo 4 stuff to uh, whet your appetite for the different Halo games. I don't think you're going to be seeing much Halo 2 Classic and Combat Evolved on my channel. Um, I play mainly the Team Slayer playlist, and Combat Evolved and Halo 2 Classic just do not get voted in Team Slayer very much at all. And to be honest, uh, me and Ubernick and Sort Vengeance, who is my team that I play with on a regular basis, uh, we don't really go out of the, our way to vote those maps. Um, for me, Combat Evolved just seems a little bit like archaic in the game design in, in certain aspects. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people always bring up the point that sometimes it's nicer to go back into history and, uh, you know, maybe take some game design elements that aren't so constricted by, uh, you know, triple A philosophy of, of catering to a wider market. Um, they're not as constrained because this was a different era in gaming. And to some extent, I agree, but I also think it's kind of a double-edged sword. I think you give up uh, some of the... Um, advancements that you find in modern games. For instance, I find some of the base mechanics in Combat Evolved uh, not that enjoyable, um, such as like the floatier jump. The jump just feels a little bit less uh, wieldy. The melee just doesn't feel to seem to feel like it has the responsiveness. Um, and I kind of feel the same way about Halo 2 Classic, in fact, and I didn't think I would. Um, but going back to Halo 2 Classic, it just feels a little bit out of touch with what I'm looking for from modern FPSs, uh, and if you disagree, that's fine, that's just my opinion, that's just where, why you're not going to be seeing too much combat evolved uh, on my channel. But today I wanted to talk about some of the advancements being made in Halo 5, um, there were actually two fairly significant revelations um, that were uncovered for us, um, including the playlist lineup and um, the other one being the ranking systems and how exactly they're going to work, um, or more importantly, the emblems and the uh, the actual tiers of ranking have been uh, revealed, which I personally found very interesting myself. I'll go into the playlist first. Um, the playlists that we're going to see on day one are going to include Warzone, Warzone Assault, Team Arena, Slayer, Breakout, Free For All, SWAT, and Weekend Social. Now, if you don't know what the Weekend Social is, uh, essentially on a weekly basis, they're going to rotate uh, via a player voting system, which they haven't really done. In Halo 4, they had something where uh, you could vote for an individual uh, voting selection. Um, so it was like you could choose between Snipers, King of the Hill, and uh, something like Mini Slayer in Action Sack, and you had a choice of that. But they've never actually uh, enabled the players to vote for a specific playlist, which I personally am quite happy with the playlist that they've announced. I know there was a lot of back and forth on Twitter uh, regarding the uh, lack of quite a significant amount of playlists, including stuff like Team Snipers, uh, including a regular Action Sack playlist, a Team Objective playlist. You know, you're obviously missing stuff like King of the Hill, Oddball, um, and just basically staples of the series. And I understand that. Um, I kind of knew that sacrifices would have to be made going into it, especially uh, coming from the Halo 4 frame of mind, where there were so many playlists that, unfortunately, even though they felt like they deserved more numbers, uh, it just couldn't be catered to, and it felt like the player numbers were being more spread thin. And personally, I kind of felt it it came at the cost of optimization of more popular play playlists, because uh, they were getting less players, less search times. Um, whether or not this apl it applies, because the thing is, we don't know about the overall longevity and the population that Halo 5 is going to have. If it had a really healthy, long-standing population, then it's kind of hard to say if it was worth getting rid of so many of these playlists, because there were definitely one of two routes they could have gone. You know, they could have just played it a little bit safe, but still included quite a few of the fan favorites. Like, I mean, Team Objective is surprising. A surprising loss but they seem to really uh, go for the jugular this time and say no like we don't want any empty wasted uh, population slots um, and in the long run I don't think it's actually gonna be that bad I think um, if you think about like day one of a big multiplayer title um, the amount of times I've picked up a game and it's been effectively broken on launch and they've had to play catch up because the servers have just been overloaded and everyone's flooded on at once um, and you can't play any playlist um, in an optimal setting. Uh, 
Um, it's just happened countless times, time and time again, and it takes like a week and they have to release a patch. So maybe with this lack of like overflow of playlists, uh, it's going to mean that the playlists that we do have are going to be more optimal, there's going to be easier to get into games, and there's going to be less frustrations at launch. Um, and personally, I think with the weekend social playlist, they're going to be able to slowly but surely filter in playlists, uh, gauge the feedback of the players, um, instead of them having to take a gamble, because that's effectively what they do. They throw in a bunch of playlists, um, happen to see that like three of them were way far underpopulated compared to you know, some of the bigger playlists, and then they'd have to get rid of them over time, and it would be a slightly complicated, awkward playlist, uh, awkward transition, and people would get frustrated because their playlist looked like it was going to stay in the game, and then it got taken out. So I think with this, they're going to be able to gauge feedback, they're going to be able to put stuff in only if it's like 100% certain that it should be put in. I think the playlists you see here are all kind of no-brainers. I think they'll all uh, retain some sort of a population. I don't see any of them as like super niche. Um, so personally, I'm okay with the ideas. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you completely disagree. Um, I know guys like Happy Zoo were offering, you know, fairly convincing arguments in the opposite column, and I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think this is just the decision that they've taken to try and avoid uh, playlist like over oversaturation and underpopulation, um, and whether or not it will work. I think they've definitely taken the safe route, um, and it might be too safe. Who knows? We shall see. Um, you know, one of the, the best things about Halo is the sheer variety and volume of uh, playlists and experiences that it can offer. And they might be shooting themselves in the foot um, by uh, losing a couple of their more niche um, individual playlists. And I definitely think there's a case for that. Um, so we'll have to see. I think it will all depend on how they deal with the week weekend rotation social right, playlists um, and how well they're implemented, how um, broad and comprehensive the voting system is for that. Um, and how you know responsive they are to player feedback. Then we've got the ranking systems. Um, it seems like they've obviously taken somewhat of a page out of the League of Legends book or the StarCraft 2 book, um, which makes sense as they did hire that guy whose name is slipping my mind. I think what they've gone for above anything, and I myself am a huge fan of this because I don't feel like um, it gets given enough credit. I think people kind of take this sort of stuff for granted. Uh, in terms of the UI and the uh, charm behind the ranks. Um, and what I mean by that is they have a very bold visual appearance. They're going to be very striking when you go into the lobby. Obviously, you've got the different categories of bronze, silver, gold, diamond, platinum. Um, and then you've got like your champion rank at the very top. Um, and I think that's a really interesting way that they've uh, implemented this. Because uh, it just looks like there's a big emphasis on, hey... You know, you achieved a high rank, so now you've got this big, bold, bulky emblem behind it. Um, and I'm obviously, I, I'm just a big fan of that. I feel like, uh, you know, playing Halo at a high level can be a frustrating, uh, you know, arduous road towards uh, achieving your goals. And I think one of the things that frustrated people in Halo 4 is that it felt like the game wasn't really giving uh, enough credit to the players who had um, put in the work you know even with the CSR you, most people found out CSR by going on quickcsr.com and that was like the only interesting way they didn't have the ranks in game um, and for a lot of people that was severely frustrating myself included you know I got a 50 for the first time in Halo 4 uh, and it felt like it didn't really mean that much uh, a because not many people respected Halo 4's competitive play but b um, because it just wasn't uh, littered across the game and it felt like people were working less hard for it as a result because there was no uh, in-game reward or compensation for the amount of effort that you'd put in and uh, it was kind of like you just have to tell people instead of it being self-explanatory like you had to be like oh did you know that if you go on quick CSR I managed to achieve a 50 which is quite a high rank like by the time you've finished explaining that to someone they've already like drifted off and they're like whatever but the second you see one of these big you know, emphasized emblems uh, in the lobby. I feel like it's going to be really good at differentiating those players from the others in the lobby and making it known to you that you're going to be either facing a tougher team or a lesser team. Um, and people are going to be more invested in the experience on a game-by-game -game basis because there's something to work for. There's something that clearly defines your position in the Halo game. Um, and it's just, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, and I'm just extremely happy with the direction that they've gone in terms of stat tracking, 
uh, you know, making the API available to players. I'll leave links in the description, um, you know, that go into further detail explaining these aspects of the system. But uh, nonetheless, I think they've just done a tremendous job. And I think Halo 5 um, is very set upon um, making the cosmetic and rewards experience a more fulfilling one. Because if you look at games like CSGO and games like League of Legends, a lot of those games... Uh, pretty much that got the community on their side by their investment in the game. They felt like they didn't want to leave that multiplayer game because not only have they achieved a lot in terms of raising their player skill and their player acumen, but also they've got this large trophy chest and this trophy cabinet um, of awards and unlocks that they feel if they like leave the game, that that's like a, a big chunk of their life, a big chunk of what they worked for is going down the drain. Um, and I think it's important from a developer's standpoint to uh, make your player feel rewarded and incentivize them um, and yeah just make something tangible out of the experience even if it's something as small as like a bold emblem um, and a defined rank. Um, it really goes the extra mile and I think that with the requisition system and the skins that we're going to be able to unlock is going to make it really hard to put down Halo 5. Um, and that was definitely one of the complaints that a lot of people had with Halo 4 is that you could put it down in quite some small uh, space of time because um, it was a fairly drop-in, drop-out experience and not much to show for yourself at the end of each and every game. Uh, anyway, I've been Modest Major. Hope you guys enjoyed this little commentary. Um, thank you guys for watching. Peace out.